Okay, we're back here for round three on this Craftsman riding mower. We repaired a loose valve seat in this head. And there you can see, like in the last video, if you get to see the last video, I, I peened around there to hold the valve seat in. And I broke the valve while I was working on it, so that's a another valve from another engine there. Get some of this leftover dirt out of here. So now we'll put the head gasket on. It does go that way. There's two little pins on the engine here to locate that and also to locate the head, keep it lined up. start putting the head bolts in. All right, I looked up the torque spec for this engine, and it ends up at 220 inch-pounds, and this is an inch-pound torque wrench, and it's recommended that you go to, to 160 first. So we'll get these a little tight here. Then I will look at the torque wrench and see where it ends up at. Maybe I'll get a shorter extension so that the torque wrench is actually in the in the shot. Oh, that's about 150 there. This is inch pounds, so it's not real tight. The one place I saw the specs for it was in foot pounds, and it was 18 and a half. So, and that was for the 220. If you do it on the calculator, it comes out to 222. Of course, there is a specific sequence to go in. I didn't really worry about that. That's all of them at 150. So now we'll go to 220. Right about there. Now I think I'm going to go, try to go in an order like it should be. is where you go back and forth kind of in a crisscross pattern
All right, now they're torqued to what the engineers say it should be. Now the next thing we do is we put the push rods back in. Now these are a little tricky because there is a lifter in there that they have to go into and you don't really know if they're in there and I missed missed the target. I don't know if you can see it now with that shadow. Let me move the camera a little bit. But right here, there's a hole, there's a plate right here to hold this, this push rod. And like when we took it apart, the aluminum one was on top. Now, we got to make sure that those are in there where they belong. And to do that, we're going to put a little pressure on them. We're going to turn this. So the top one's definitely moving. And the bottom one's definitely moving. So they are, they are in the lifter where they need to be. And I'm going to put them so that they're both in all the way. So they're, they're both in all the way. They're not moving. So that's going to be good to uh, set the gap here. So now I didn't loosen these adjusters when I took it apart, so that's why they're not going back on. So I got to loosen those. Yeah. Now the way these work, these two screws in the center, they tighten down the nut. And these are Torx. These are these are not Allens. These are actually Torx. So we loosen that one, and we'll loosen that one. That way we can back these off. A little bit more. Now hold that on there. Run that on by hand. And the same thing on the bottom. Now this one, we're going to back this out a little bit. There we go. So now we have to set the gap. There's a, a certain amount of gap that goes in there a little bit of play and on the intake valve which is this one that one that gap is three to five thousands and my gauge set here only goes down to five thousands so the the intake is three to five thousands and the exhaust is five to seven thousands so we'll do five and six. We'll do a nice snug five on the bottom. So we'll just tighten that like that just by hand. Now when I tighten this set screw, it might pull that nut out a little bit. So then we'll check the gap again once that's nice and tight all right so it's nice and snug there it'd be nice if they made these a little bit bigger because it almost feels like you're going to break the tool so yeah that's a nice snug five thousandths there so now we're going to go with six thousandths on the top here And it's not much. The, the reason that the exhaust is a little bit higher, a little bit more gap, 
is because it's going to get hotter than the intake one. So it's, it's going to expand a little bit. So that's why they don't get the same measurement. All right. There's a torque spec for those set screws. I didn't look it up. I make them tight. So now if we turn this, both of those valves should open and close. And the compression release is working on the intake there. It's going to come out all the way, and then it's going to go in right there. That's the compression release. That's what allows it to crank over with the starter. When Briggs went to these overhead valve engines, somehow the starters aren't strong enough. So they have to release a little compression while it's cranking over. And that's why you see that valve pop open just a little bit. So now I got two little parts left in my valve cover here. These two little caps. And if any of you guys did this before you're watching to see if I make any mistakes, this was it. Out of sight, out of mind. I forgot about these. Didn't hurt anything. I didn't run it like that. So these two little caps, they go on top of the valve for the rocker arm to ride against. So now we'll have to loosen them up, take the rocker arms, move them out of the way, and put those two little caps back on. So let's get this... Right around there. I'm going to take this little cap, put it on there. Back this off some more. There we go. So that's a good example of uh, why it's nice to put all your parts together so you don't lose any. Because uh, obviously I didn't see those and I forgot about them. But when I took all the bolts out of the valve cover, there they were. So we can put them on. Now we set the gap again. Five and six. I like to rock it a little bit just to make sure it's centered because everything is is curved. There's kind of a ball on the end of this nut and there's a ball on the end of the push rod. So I like to make sure that they're set in there that they're seated all the way. And now six for the exhaust.
All right, second time's a charm, right? I know I said valve cover next, but we got these two bolts here. They're for the intake. And normally when you're pulling these heads off, you just take these two bolts out and let this carburetor and intake just hang right here. That way you don't have to mess with the linkage. Right now I'm putting the breather hose back on here. Now I don't have a new valve cover gasket. Typically these can be reused if they're not torn. But I'm gonna put a little bit of sealer around here on this side and on the other side. Now you don't need a whole lot. All right, so something you want to watch out for. You don't want to over tighten these hold these bolts here because you can stretch that metal. You can dimple it in that way, which means it's going to be sticking out over here on this side and it won't get tight. It'll get tight right there on the corners and it'll be loose in the center. So you want to make sure that you don't over tighten these. Because sometimes, you know, if this starts to leak, people just grab a socket and tighten them down and that's okay if they came loose but it is possible to over tighten and just cause more problems and if you put this valve cover back on so that you can read this that it's not upside down that it's OHV and not AHO when it's in this, this way here that you can read it then your model number and serial number is on top instead of underneath. And that'll come in handy the next time you need to look at your model number if you need to order a part. Sometimes you can reuse these, but this is already starting to get burned. Like it's it's either starting to wear out or it just wasn't tight enough at one point. But I do have new ones, I believe, so I'm going to go look. All right, so here's a new gasket for the exhaust. That way it doesn't start making noise and somebody tightens it up and then strip out the holes in the head. I've seen that already. And we got to make sure that bracket that goes onto the head is in the right spot. This one right here. There, now it'll go in. Now we rotate this back around here. This one in, which really comes in from out here.
The spark plug's not new, but I think it's still going to work all right. It is a split fire. Nice fancy one. Now we'll put it in here and see what happens. Once I get it started straight. plug wire back on here so now at this point this is actually ready to start but we're going to put the cover back on so on these engines this cover helps to hold the dipstick tube in so I don't like to run it too much without this cover on Have everything lined up just right it drops right on just got to get bent back in a little bit there is a spot in here that this latches on to If your sheet metal's not bent like this one was, it, it should go back on without a problem. Usually it sits right where it needs to go. That feels pretty good there. Now over here, you just want to make sure that it pops down on top of the carburetor. I know you can't see it, but when you're doing it, you'll see that the, the carburetor's not in all the way into the, the bottom of the housing here. All these bolts are 3 8 and I have a nice little 3 8 ratchet wrench here that I can just go around and tighten these back up. On this particular cover, the holes that these bolts go through, the holes are slotted. So all you have to do is loosen the bolts. They don't have to actually come out of their, where they're screwed into in the block. You can just loosen them. And that one's missing. You could actually use the same bolts as the other ones. Some of these have, have these fancy bolts, like if another cover was on the front here. Maybe in a different market, you know, another country or something. But some of them have these, some of them don't. But I can add that other screw later. I can go, go get one off another engine. But that's not important. All right, so it looks like it's all back together. Oh, let's look at the air filter here. Air filter, they replaced that. I think they were trying to troubleshoot this running problem. But I could tell that they had the carburetor off, and actually it looks like a replacement carburetor. But with that valve not closing, it just was not going to run right. So here the oil is right at add. So we're gonna go with that for now. It's clean. That's a good sign. Usually. When the oil's clean but the engine's locked up, that means the oil was empty and they refilled it. 99% of the time. All right, I'm going to move back a little bit here with the camera so you can see all the smoke. Because it's going to smoke. Because there was oil all over the front of the tractor. And uh, it always smokes after you do a head, head gasket. Well, let's see if it'll crank up. And the choke is working. Set the brake here. 
Well, that needs attention. The deck's not releasing the way it should. Luckily, the belt's not tight. In neutral, got the brake on. We'll crank it a little bit, then I'll put the choke on. Okay, so there when I started it, it started right up and it was running rough. That was because the choke did not release. The linkage is a little bent. So when you put the throttle all the way up to put the choke on, it just doesn't release when you bring it back down to running speed. So that, uh, I just have to straighten that out a little bit. Hopefully the spring isn't bad from the replacement carburetor. Now, when, when I started this, there wasn't any smoke, but you know, anytime you take a head off, usually the reason you're taking it off caused oil to go into the exhaust. So as that muffler gets hot, you're going to start seeing smoke. And the, the exit for the exhaust is down at the bottom, and the smoke is coming from everywhere. And the hotter it gets, the more it's going to smoke till it starts to burn it off of there. So, you know, as long as it's not coming right out of that the exhaust outlet, it's really not anything to be worried about but you know if you started up and you and you got really strong smoke coming right out of the opening then something's not quite right and you need to maybe shut it down and check on it but after this runs for like five minutes you know you'll see that that smoke is really going to disappear so uh pretty soon here i'm going to try to slow the engine down and it's not going to slow down and i find out that this uh carburetor that was put on here I could tell that it wasn't set up right but uh, I got to do do some adjustments to it so I'm going to be moving the camera and uh, we'll wait till we get to that part And we'll find out a little bit later that I, I think it's running a little bit too fast. And I'm going to adjust that a little unconventional because it's a little hard to get to the way that I was doing it. So here I'm going to try and slow the engine down. So I put the throttles down all the way but it didn't really make much of a difference so I'm gonna adjust the idle speed screw and I'm gonna try and get the camera where you guys can see what's going on so this is just a Phillips screwdriver there's a, a small screw in there and uh, it was screwed in pretty far, so the idle is going to be way too high. Now I have the the engines, the, the volume turned down on this, just so that it's not too loud. So I, I may change the volume a little bit later because once I get it to where it, it idles at a regular speed, it, it doesn't run smooth. Now what I'm adjusting right there is the the mixture screw. It goes at an angle a little bit. It's, it's at the outside of the carburetor. And it's going at an angle. And uh, I had screwed it in before I even started it because the spring wasn't even snug. So I could tell that it was out of adjustment. And it'll run like that, but it, it wasn't running smooth. It, was, it had a steady, rough idle to it because it was just a little bit too rich. So, I, as you screw that in and lean it out, it'll tend to idle a little bit faster. So here I'm just turning the idle speed down a little bit more. <clears throat> and then I realize that the idle speed's not going down anymore because the throttle linkage is a little bent there on that plate and the slider can't go all the way to the slowest speed to, to where it would be on the slowest idle speed 
I have to bend the tab a little bit, it's going to happen any second here. Like I said earlier, I think somebody was working on this, so there's some things that are not what they should be. But I have to, I have to come across and kind of undo a little bit. But here I'm going to move the throttle cable. Well, I'll attempt to move the throttle cable a little bit, but it ended up really not needing to be moved. Now I got the idle speed fairly close to where I want it. Then I'm going to fine tune the mixture screw. It's just easier to turn with these pliers. I'm not sure if you'll be able to hear it. Maybe uh, turn your volume up if you're still with me at this part of the video. Well, it's almost at the end, but this here is kind of crucial that that you get it so it runs smooth. Mm. And as I turn clockwise in that direction right there, I get a little bit. You keep going a little bit by little bit, and when the speed starts to slow down, you'll you, you'll be able to hear it. When it starts to slow down a little bit, that then you're you're at the limit, you need to go backwards a little bit. And you want to kind of balance it to where, at, at you know, figure out where one's, one direction, it starts to slow it down, and then the opposite direction, how many turns, or part of a turn, so it starts to get a little bit rough, and then screw it back to right about in the middle. And that's about where it should be. And then you can go and, and set your idle speed. And I'm setting the speed by ear. I think it should be around 11 or 1200 RPMs. As long as you can throw the throttle down and it doesn't seem like the engine's going to stall out or it, it's kind of trying to figure out where it wants to, to, to level out at, you know, you, as long as it slows down and stays at a, a constant speed and it's not racing. But that's going to be good. So now I, I determined that the top speed, when I put the throttle up all the way in the run position, that the, the high RPM speed is too high. I don't like the way it sounds. And again, I'm just doing that by ear. I've been doing this a long, long time. And um, certain RPMs have a certain sound, and it, it's running a little bit too fast. Now, there's videos out there about adjusting the governor. And, you know, that's okay where you loosen the clamp. When you move the throttle, and, uh, this arm is attached to a spring. And it's the other end of the spring is attached to the governor. And right now, it's adjusted for too high of a top speed. When I put the throttle up all the way. It was going way too fast. So I'm gonna bend this down a little bit. I'm gonna try and get a picture up on the screen so you can see what this actually looks like because there's there's almost no way I'd be able to record this and have it make any sense to you. So what I'm actually gonna do is just take a throttle assembly off another engine just like this so you can see the back of it. And I'll explain it that way. So there's a lever there that when you move the throttle, this lever moves and there's a spring on it. And that spring pulls against the governor. And the governor arm is what's connected to the throttle on the carburetor. So the more you stretch that spring, the faster it makes the engine run. Well, that, that arm should be bent to a certain position. So that when you put it on full throttle, it puts a certain amount of tension on the spring. 
and uh, it, it must have got bent or something. Now here again, I got to put the choke off by hand. I got to work on this choke linkage. It's not returning because it's bent. And when it goes up there, you that of the spring is going to be good. So I bent that lever so that it doesn't pull on the spring quite as hard. And what that will do is it, it won't make the, the governor open the throttle so far. And I think I end up bending it back just a little bit because I, I want to dial the, the full high speed a little bit higher. So now hopefully this isn't too loud for your, your speakers. I had a skinnier screwdriver. Probably get in there. So here you can kind of hear that it's running steady, but it's got a little burble to it. You know, just a little bit of flutter. So I, I was trying to, uh, to fine tune the mixture there. And that idle mixture screw, the the shiny one, if you have your, if it's big enough on your screen, you see, you, you adjust that when it's running at All idle right, speed, not at full speed. A valve seat that popped out, no compression, engine spun real easy. Took the head off, put the valve seat back in. Hopefully it lasts for a long time. And put the head back on, and engine starts. I had to adjust the carburetor. The idle mixture, the idle speed, the top end speed, because it looks like a new carburetor. It just needed to be set up correctly. And uh, that's going to be a wrap. Uh, like and subscribe. There'll be more like this.